Can a narcissistically abusive person be converted into Christianity to become more Christ-like? Hmm. This is the same question, by the way, as can a narcissistic person change? It doesn't matter how you slap it up, slip it, flip it, or twist the question. It's basically the same concept. Can a narcissistic person change? And well, the answer to that, everybody already knows. And the answer is, let's say it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Uh, kinda. Kinda. They can change like a chameleon can change its colors. The creature doesn't change, but the colors can change to fit into whatever surroundings it needs to fit into. In that way, a narcissistic person can change. And you know this. So, let's apply this concept into a church with Christians and Christianity. Can a narcissistic person be converted? Well, in the same way as a chameleon can be converted. The creature is going to be the same, but their color is going to look different. But I want to get even deeper with you than this. Because we've got to get past this concept and this idea of people being able to change because it's only going to hurt you. Let's talk. My name is Kevin and this is The Royal We. Now, before I continue with this very important message, I want to let you know that I'm here to support you. Down in the description box, you'll find access for one-on-one appointments with me. I do take telephone calls and video calls through Zoom, FaceTime, and WhatsApp. So if you're looking for one-on-one time to help understand the toxic relationship that you're in, so you can stop trying to wait for them to change, head on down there, schedule some time with me. I'd love to talk with you. Also, I do have a coaching program. My coaching program is live and in person each and every day, Monday through Friday. The Royal We community is based on a effort to go no contact, break the trauma bonds, go into 2023 toxic free. So if you're looking for accountability in your life to break the trauma bonds, head on down there, get started. I'd love to see you in class. Now we're talking about praying or converting narcissistic people to become better Christians, which basically is the same as trying to get them to change. Not a good idea. Let me ask you a question. Why would a narcissistic person convert into being more Christ-like or Jesus-like or whatever you think conversion looks like? Let me ask you this. They go to church as they are. Abusive, bullying, mean, whatever. Suddenly, They walk into this place and they're greeted with all these smiles, handshakes, everybody wants to touch their hand, strange women and strange men want to hug them, kiss them on the cheek, throw daisies at them, say welcome, so good to see you here, smile at them, right, all this and that, then they get to sit down and they get to watch some rock and roll show for free, (laughs) get some free coffee, free donuts good music, right? Then listen to a comedic pastor tell jokes. Also talking about love and how important love is and this and that. Then they get to raise their hands at the end and stand up to a standing ovation as they're called forward. And all eyes are on them as they walk down the aisle going to the altar to get prayed for. People clapping and cheering for him. I'm going to be honest with you. Sounds like a narcissist wet dream, to be honest with you. All that attention. All that supply. And then they get up there and, and they get a free be- believer's Bible. New believer's Bible. Which, by the way, cuts the bulk of the important things out of the Bible completely. The foundations of the knowledge of God are eliminated And what they get to take home is this story of how loved they are, no matter what they do in life. Right? And you want to ask whether or not that's going to convert a narcissistic person. What's the motive to convert? Now, here's where people get this all twisted up. There is only one story in the Bible of a conversion that takes place with a narcissistic person a nasty narcissistic person. And that's the story of Paul, the Apostle Paul. And this is where a lot of Christianity gets the story wrong and confuses it. And 
By the way, it's the story of Paul that non-denominational Western world churches utilize to keep people believing that narcissists and psychopaths and sociopaths can be good people, can be Christ-like or whatever they're, they're promoting out there, right? Listen, here's the reality. The Apostle Paul wasn't converted because of kisses on his cheek and handshakes and people hugging on him. Oh, we love you, Paul. Glad you're here. Given a new believer's Bible. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not what took place at all. The conversion process for Paul was much more gross than that. You see, for those of you who don't know the story, Paul began as Saul. That was his original name. An extremely narcissistic bully, a tyrant, a killer. He hated people like most narcissists do. Particularly, he hated people who followed Jesus or who acknowledged Jesus at that time. It was people who followed the way. Christians didn't exist at the time. Christianity was not even a thing at the time of Jesus and thereafter. They simply went according to following the way. Because Jesus, that's how he rolled. As he taught, he said, this is the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. This is the way. Let me show you the way. Therefore, they called themselves people who followed the way. And Saul, at the time, hated people who mentioned the way. This is the way. This is the way to the truth. This is the way. He hated him, and so we wanted to have him killed. In typical narcissistic fashion. Controlling. Belligerent. Nasty. Evil. People. Kind of like the narcissistic people you're dealing with. Just nasty, vile killers in their heart. But watch this. (laughs) Saul wasn't moved. By going to the churches and synagogues and giving a new believer's Bible. No, he killed those people. He hated them. Right? The only reason Saul had a conversion in life was because he had a very unique encounter on his own, far away from people who followed the way. He had a unique encounter with God on his own that had stricken him down and blinded him. For three days, blinded him. He couldn't see a thing. He would have died had it not been for the hand of people who led him. And even then, he had no idea if he was ever going to see again or what just happened to him. He was devastated. His world was shooken. He lost everything. He was peeing his pants, scared out of his mind. This is what conversion looks like. You see, I believe that conversion and transformation comes out of starvation, comes out of rock bottom. It comes out of losing what you never imagined you would lose. And for Paul, it was his eyesight. His life was threatened with never being able to be able to see again, period, end. And it was during this part of Saul's life that he came to some realizations that I'm going to change the way that I that I act and by the way this doesn't necessarily mean that his core person changed it just means he had a new philosophy on life because of this encounter and so he went on to become Paul known as the apostle but you see that conversion is radically different than what Christianity teaches you. Bring your bullying love, loved ones to church. Let us love all over them so they can convert. Do you see how opposite that is of the actual story of Paul's conversion? Paul was converted through losing everything. Whereas you're told you can have a narcissistic person in your life be converted by you loving on them more. Do you, do you see what's, what's missing in this? You see, all you're doing when you love on a narcissistic person, a bully, a tyrant in your life, somebody who wants to hurt you, all you're doing when you love on them is you're rewarding them. 
All you're doing is telling them that they're awesome. All you're doing is telling them that they can keep doing what they're doing. Today's modern Western world church offers no motivation for people to really change their lives. Not with their open door policy. This is why most churches of today are filled with narcissistically abusive people, even the pastors themselves. I should make an entirely different video of this, but how many of you have dealt with Christians, Christian counselors or pastors who you've tried to talk to about narcissistic abuse that you've been dealing with and how many of them replied to you by saying, you know what, you just need to love on those people? How many of you? Say I. Let me tell you the reality of what's really taking place when this happens. Again, I should make a whole other video on this, but I'm just going to briefly tackle it right here. Human beings, we have this way in which we protect what we understand. We protect what we resonate with. I'm going to give you an example. I have ADHD. How many of you know somebody who has ADHD? Listen, I've got, pro- I've got problems because of it, right? Uh, typically in the department of paying attention. Which, by the way, narcissists hate people with ADHD with a passion. Because narcissists can't control them. In fact, I made a whole video on the war between narcissistically abusive people and ADHDers. You can check that video out right there when this one's done. It's a good video. I encourage you to watch it. But my point is, is that being somebody with ADHD, anytime I have siblings or people in my life who either have children who are ADHD, typically this is what happens, and I see them wrestling, struggling with this child with ADHD, and they're complaining and blah, 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 and angry and this and that, I will typically step in and side with the person with ADHD. And I feel like I have to back them down and calm them down and say, hey, wait a minute. This, he, he's not trying to, his, his mind works that way. He's not paying attention because it's not engaging. You're trying to force, you're overbearing. You know what I mean? And I step in. Why am I bringing this up? I want you to think about this. As your pastor or your Christian counselors are telling you to pray and love those who are abusive towards you. What they're really saying is, hey, I resonate with that. Yeah, chances are your pastors and your counselors are probably bullies or have been. They have been the type to be able to hurt other people. And as a result, they're quick to say, hey, hey, just love those people because it's them. You probably never thought of that. We're not, we don't really think in these terms, but it's true. Now then, like I said, I should make a whole other video just talking about that. But for right now, for this topic, I don't want to get too distracted. That's my ADHD mind, right? I just want to get us back on track of understanding that narcissistically abusive people are not going to convert by the laying on of hands and by you bringing them into a crowd of people who can pray for them and this and that. They're just not, there's no motivation for that. All that's happening is they're playing a game with you while you continue to try to change them. At some point, you don't want, I've said this time and time again, you don't want somebody you have to try to change. If you have to change them, if you want them to convert into anything other than what they are, then own up to the fact that you're different and you don't like them. They're not going to change for you, even if they could, right? Like I said, just like a chameleon, it's only their colors that are going to change, but the creature is going to stay the same. You can take a bear and you can put it in the circus, teach it to balance on a ball, wear a vest, put a hat on. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be a bear, isn't it? Or a wolf. You're not going to change the creature by praying for it. Remember that. And you're probably going to look at a lot of your pastors and counselors differently now, aren't you? As you should. I'll be back with more videos for you. Right here on the Royal We. If you need one-on-one support, head on down there, schedule it with me. I'd love to talk with you. And I'll be back. Bye.